Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from sortofinteresting.com and today you're joining me on board good old narrowboat Abel Zark and as you can see we've got an 8 times actual speed time lapse as we head up to Chirk Marina just on our left hand side here and at this point we're going to drop back as we enter the marina into real time so you can see just how slow and painstaking a lot of narrowboat travel is especially when you get into these sort of areas where it's a little bit fiddly uh, angling around the marina and so on because you obviously don't want to be clattering into other people's boats and stuff like that so basically in this video we're gonna top up with a bit of diesel and unbelievably you've just seen how close we were to the marina and you've already started to see now from these last few seconds of footage just how slow narrowboat travel is and especially when you're uh, as I say in these sort of tight spots where you don't want to be well turning it into a game of bumping cars and unbelievably all of this process of getting a bit of diesel from the marina that was a few hundred yards down the canal and then getting out to that relative same area of canal took us over 40 minutes. So I had my good friend on board for this trip and as you'll see later on it's uh, it didn't go quite to plan. It wasn't a disaster or anything like that but the intention was that we were basically going to be coming up to just past where that blue boat that's just over on the, well, directly in front of us now, just to our left. There's another boat moored up just on the side of that, a holiday boat. And the plan was to moor up next to that and get a bit of diesel, nice and simple. Obviously, you can see how slow we're travelling to like keep control of the situation basically luckily we didn't have any wind because obviously the wind if it's strong enough can play merry havoc with your general boating and schemes as a, as a whole however obviously if you're traveling at very low speeds like this and you haven't got the momentum in the boat then the wind can cause even more mayhem in these sort of spots so you can see there the boats just to our left hand side that we're going to moor up next to and as you'll see in seconds, I walked down to the side so I was between the two boats so it could very gently have them just come together so that all the fenders and that just just bump themselves in so that there's almost zero actual impact when the boats come together. And I was just there holding them together initially. Uh, my friend was on the tiller just putting a little bit of neutral, uh, a little bit of neutral, uh, putting a little bit of forwards, a little bit of reverse and then leaving it in neutral once you're in position and everything was fine. It was about as flawless as we could have hoped that it would go. However, when one of the marina staff came up to uh, speak brilliantly, uh, because this boat here, this holiday boat that I'm uh, currently wedged between Abel's Ark and, um, because that's there, they couldn't actually reach the diesel hose over to the boat. So we then, as you're about to see, so I've got a weird, weird moment of my voice here. Um, so basically, we ended up having to go around the next corner and there was even a boat that we'd even seen moving before we set off in the marina. And that had actually moved up into the place that we ideally would have gone to. So anyway, um, me and my friends just had a, a general chat. And I really do think it's one of the coolest things in the world. I mean, just hanging around, look at this, just holding two boats together by hand. I do at one point just nip off to the back of the boat where I then take the... Uh, stern line, the rope that's going up to the stern of Abel's Ark, and I tie that around the actual front uh, cleat, the front little uh, nozzle, whatever you want to call it, that you wrap the ropes around of the holiday boat that we're moored up next to, because obviously I couldn't take the rope all the way over to the jetty over the other boat, because that would have been, well, a spaghetti junction of ropes for a start. But secondly, as you can probably tell, it was uh, not the sort of thing that you needed to be planning on as if we were staying here for days on end or anything. So it just needed to be a little quick wrap around and lock the rope in place so it could then easily be untied. So at this point, we've just zoomed the camera in slightly because my friend came and stood right in front of the camera. And I thought he's probably not going to want to see that on screen. Literally a dramatic close up right of his face as the closest thing to the camera. But I just like to say, I just think this is such, this is what's so good. Like you say, it's taken us 40 minutes to get a bit of diesel and back. And we're just here holding boats together, floating about. And it's just a great bit of fun. 
So at this point, uh, the chap who uh, from the marina actually came on board and I let him steer us around here because as you're seeing now, again, this is eight times actual speed that you're viewing and you can imagine how fiddly this work was and especially because we were mooring up next to another private boat I sit and that had just been blacked so that's like pristine condition with the hull and uh, all the paint on the hull at least so I thought let's let's just let uh, somebody <laughs> a member of staff deal with this and so that's what we did so you saw me there just getting one of the fenders from the front of the boat just to hang that over from the back of the boat on the side that we're mooring up next to this uh, other boat because obviously the last thing you want to do I've got this uh, cord from the blind here sorry interfering with me um, but obviously the last thing that you want to do is be scraping along to another boat that's just been freshly painted so you can see here as we come into uh, our, our little mooring for 10 minutes or so maybe a little bit longer just well filled up with about 70 litres of diesel and then I hopped over into the office to pay for that and that was all good really it's all as you can see nice and simple just very very slow to do and very painstaking and again it was a, an excellent thing for this chap to be like well I'll fetch it in if you want and so obviously having somebody who does this all the time and literally their job is spending their days moving boats around in this very specific part of the marina where all the holiday boats are he obviously was a, a master and had plenty of practice of this so now we are right the way up to 20 times actual speed on this current footage which as you can see shows how much movement the boats do just when they're floating around without being tied up uh, properly or securely but also it shows really how how calm and quiet the day was as you can see there's barely anybody about um you can see like a smoky chimney there and all the rest of it somebody on the boat next to us uh, running around doing well not running around just that's just because it's a time lapse um <laughs> so anyway um after the diesel was all done and paid for here we are ready to go i walked up the side and let my friend take the tiller and the throttle and basically just came out here just as you can see to make sure that we weren't going to scrape along that boat on our way out again just safety first i suppose there's no reason to not be um conscious and cautious when you're around other people's boats and there's some people who uh, certainly uh, i mean it's always been said there's a running slogan and joke that narrow boating is a contact sport but I do feel that there's some people who take that a little bit uh, as if it has to be a contact sport rather than it's an option to be a contact sport. I'll say that much. So as you can see now in real time, we're, we are now in full control of the boat again ourselves. They're uh, waving our goodbyes and saying our thank yous and all that sort of stuff. And here we are hopping away. And again, this is another perfect example. You can see how even though this is a simple, simple manoeuvre here where we're just going out of the marina and just going around the corner, basically, because there's boats all around that we're keen to avoid, taking it really slow, really calm and really cautious. So, of course, because of the way that boats turn, it's not as if you're turning a car, which is, first of all, a lot shorter than a 45 foot long boat. But secondly, obviously, in a car, you've got that perfect ability and that perfect moment to just put the brakes on and then stop the vehicle whereas obviously with the boat you're far more reliant on using reverse and forwards to try and hover in place and slow your speed and stuff like that so again as you can see here we're well just taking it nice and slow very calm and we've got our little line to get out through and uh, well, off we go i suppose so really that's about as much excitement as you get on board a narrow boat i'd say um, a lot of fiddly boating and obviously reversing in I'm glad that the chap from the marina took over because that's an awful lot of hassle and especially because it's obviously a sort of, if you're out cruising on the canals it's it's rare that you're in these scenarios where you've got boats everywhere you look and obviously you're trying to reverse where you don't have steering when the boat's actually in reverse so you have to keep going in reverse a bit then quick a bit forwards to angle your uh, water flow over the rudder just to push the boat in the right direction when you then go back into reverse and um, well it's just a, a nice bit of fun and it was very nice to actually have somebody who knows how to control the boat on board and in control of Abel's Ark for the first time since I've taken ownership of it so I think imagine that the Ark was probably pretty impressed and thought hang on a minute 
this isn't Dan on the tiller here. This is someone who actually knows what they're doing. Um, as we pass out past these boats again, you can see everything's about as calm, quiet. And um, yeah, I suppose at this point, it's probably time to start wrapping things up. As you can see, we're almost out of the marina here and back over onto the, the actual proper canal. Um, as always, please do consider checking out my other videos. There's hundreds of boat life videos from this boat and, well, not hundreds from this boat, but there's hundreds of boat life videos from when I used to live on board Narrowboat Tilly, a much smaller, more rough and ready lifestyle that was on board good old Tilly there. So please do subscribe, check out the old videos, hit the notification bell so hopefully YouTube will indeed actually tell you when I post a video. Always handy, but not necessarily always in operation that, sadly. Um, if you're curious or want to help me out, please consider checking out my short boat life books available for the Kindle and as a paperback, which I've actually got just, just ahead of me here. Anyway, please consider checking those out as it really helps me out. There's also a little audio book that I recorded available too over on Amazon. Find links to those in the description. For the mega generous amongst you, if you want to check out my Patreon, that's excellent too and that really helps me out. The reason that I set up a Patreon is because I'm releasing the book that I worked on over last year about my return to narrowboat life completely free of charge over on the website and also free of charge as a monthly audiobook here on the YouTube channel. So I hope you'll enjoy that. If you don't support the Patreon, then you don't miss out on anything. I've deliberately made it so that the Patreon's completely optional and I'm effectively just giving away my latest book completely free as an audiobook, as a written book. And then if you want to support it, then that's great. If not, I hope you enjoy the book regardless. Anyway, until the next time, my friends, you'll find links to me all over the internet on Facebook and that sort of stuff in the description, as well as the links I've just talked about. Please do consider checking those out. It really helps me out. And well, until the next time, my friends, have an absolutely fantastic day. Keep it interesting. Keep it boat worthy. And of course, my friends, farewell. <laughs>